your life. When you were finished, just came up. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, we got people on the phone today with us. And we are live on Facebook on this Wednesday morning, the 21st of April. Ooh, uh, it's my dad's birthday today. Uh, he turns 87 today. Wow. 87, getting up there. Um, so that means I must be getting up there, too. Uh, good to be with you this morning. As we, uh, as we gather together, we're getting a few people on uh, our... Facebook feed, and we've got some people on the phone with us. Uh, had the opportunity to visit with some of you guys yesterday. I got to see Judy and Frida over at the Aspire Home. I know they they usually listen. They're part of our time together on uh, weekday mornings at 10.10. 10. Uh, I've got eight people on. I can't see who's on, but I'm guessing Lou and Joe and uh maybe julie and uh tom and michelle i don't know i'm just it's not popping up today so uh, let me play around with any something here but i don't i don't see any yeah but i know you're there so uh good to be with you uh this morning well we're jumping into our continued look at first corinthians chapter four and five uh, we get to see kind of the real nitty gritty uh, today, I guess you could say, of uh, the realities of, of living in a broken world. And that certainly affects us in the church as, as well, um, as we see that the church in Corinth had its own issues and struggles. Uh, nothing new under the sun, I guess you could say. Um, we know that they were dealing with division, and Paul had spent a, a quite a bit of time on that and focused on division, uh, really focused on his role there uh, as a servant of, of Christ, uh, trying to be a, a mentor and a teacher, um, kind of the language there, um, a true father. Uh, in, in the Greek culture, kids were sent to what they called a pedagogue or a almost like a substitute teacher who would raise their, their kids when they were little and then they would oftentimes allow them uh, what would happen is you'd go back with your family and you would train under your father and so paul was, was saying hey i'm your real your real father here uh, you gotta listen to what i have to say so uh he continues with that uh in, in, in a church issue uh that they're an issue in the church that they're dealing with today as we turn to first corinthians 5. But it got me thinking uh, as I read the verses for today uh, that oftentimes um, we can be people who are just going through the motions. Uh, maybe you've, you've noticed that in life where we can just kind of go from day to day just going through, through the motions, uh, doing what we need to do, just getting by, kind of uh, living uh, life, but kind of missing life along along the way and that, that's really true i think can be true in our walk with with the lord and our walk with jesus uh, we can be just kind of going through the motions at times um, and we can not miss out on what god wants for us we can miss out on the empowered life uh, that god wants for us and we've, we've talked about that how uh, God seeks to, to move us from, from that place uh, when we call what we call our invitation and challenge matrix. Um, that, that we are invited into the family, but we also have to be challenged. And when we're not challenged, we often get bored. <laughs> if there's too much challenge, we get stressed out. And so there's this calibration of finding both invitation and challenge that leads us through through to what we would call the empowered life, the life that God really wants for us, a fruitful life, the abundant life, uh, as, as, as Jesus talks about. But anytime you're going to move from either, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of going through the motions kind of life to uh, the real life, the empowered life, you have to go through some stress. Um, you can't just jump from one place to the other. You have to go through stress. And, and we see that, that the Lord talks about that today, this idea of challenge. Um, 
so that um, we can actually live uh, the life God wants for us. Because it's easy for us to get arrogant, and I think we're going to hear that in our reading for today. We go through the motions, and as a result of that, we can become uh, arrogant in our walk, um, as we see see of ourselves uh, in, 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 is, is puffed up, uh, see ourselves in not necessarily the true light, uh, and, and point fingers at everyone else. But in, And so in order to keep us from being puffed up, becoming arrogant, God allows adversity to come. A challenge, if you will, to draw us closer to him so that we can experience uh, the empowered life. You see, we're called as followers of Jesus to be different than the world in which we live. We're called to be different. Is that easy? No. And so uh, the Lord is going to allow things to happen in our lives in order that we can live this empowered life that God wants for us, that we can be different from the world in which we live. And when we're not different, uh, then we need to be called out. And that's what Paul is doing in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 today. So let me read our verses today, kind of tie this together. From Isaiah 48, 10, it says, See, I have tested you in the furnace of adversity. You see, God will allow adversity to come into our life. He'll allow challenge to come into our lives so that we don't grow arrogant and puffed up in ourselves. But he'll allow that to happen so that we draw closer to him and experience the empowered, the breakthrough kind of life that God wants for us, his people. See, that's what God wants. That's what Jesus wants is this abundant life. The kind of life that he's come to give. But we can just find ourselves going through the motions. We can become arrogant and we can miss out. But God allows adversity to come. It's going to come. But God wants to use it for good. And then from Luke chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. This is Jesus speaking. It's part of his Sermon on the Mount from Luke's uh, Gospel. And he talks about how we're blessed. We're blessed when we go through adversity because... We are drawn closer to the Lord. We begin to experience the life that God wants for us. And we show ourselves different from the world in which we live. We represent Jesus. Blessed are you, this is what Jesus says, when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. Adversity is going to come. Following in the way of Jesus is not always going to be easy, but we are called to be different because when we're living this way, we're living like Christ lived. <laughs> we are people who are willing to forgive. Mm, forgiveness seems impossible. To love those who seem unlovable. To live in a different kind of way in a true kind of love, as we have been talking about, that is not, uh, that is patient and is not envious, and as we'll talk about this, uh, this Sunday, is not arrogant. And Jesus was not arrogant in his love, but he willingly invited and challenged people into this new way of life. And Paul is doing that today as well. So let us turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 16 and go through verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Corinthians 4, 16 through 5, 8. Uh, so the church in Corinth had become arrogant. Uh, we know there is an issue of division, and Paul is speaking to that. And really, Paul begins to challenge or call out the, the members of the church there. He says, I, I, we have come to, to lead you. We are, are willing to disciple you, but you need to be open to that. 
and you've got some issues in your church. Your church is not any different than the world around you. And so it starts with, with us. It starts with us. We need to deal with our own issues before we start dealing with the issues of those around us. And Paul calls them out on a sexual issue. So it's not any different than the world in which we live in. Um, but it's happening in the midst of the church. And Paul will go into greater detail uh, about um, the this, this sexual mystery that we are, uh, that God has created us to be, uh, as, he goes, as we go deeper into chapter 5. Uh, but here he's talking about, okay, it's time to deal with your own issues. Don't just go through the motions and become arrogant but be people who are ready to deal with the issue in your own life. And God's going to allow that to happen so that we draw closer to him and so that we can actually experience the real life, the breakthrough life that God wants for us. And Paul brings kind of a lot of challenge here. Let's just put it that way. So let me start at verse 16. I am not, you know, asking you to do anything I'm not already doing myself. This is why I sent Timothy to you earlier. He is also my dear son and true to the master. He will refresh your memory on the instructions I regularly give all the churches on the way of Christ. I know there are some among you who are so full of themselves they never listen to anyone, let alone me. They don't think I'll ever show up in person, but I'll be there sooner than you think, God willing, and then we'll see if they're full of anything but hot air. God's way is not a matter of mere talk. It is an empowered life. So how should I prepare to come to you as a severe disciplinarian who makes you toe the mark or as a good friend and counselor who wants to share heart to heart with you you decide now verse or chapter five <laughs> i also received a report of scandalous sex within your church family a kind that wouldn't be tolerated even outside the church one of your young men is sleeping with his stepmother and you're so above it all that it doesn't even phase you Shouldn't this break your hearts? Shouldn't it bring you to your knees in tears? Shouldn't this person and his conduct be confronted and dealt with? I tell you what I would do. Even though I'm not there in person, consider me right there with you because I can fully see what's going on. I'm telling you that this is wrong. You must not simply look the other way and hope it goes away on its own. Bring it out in the open and deal with it in the authority of Jesus, our master. Master, Assemble the community. I'll be present in spirit with you, and our master Jesus will be present in power. Hold this man's conduct up to public scrutiny. Let him defend it if he can, but if he can't, then out with him. It will be totally devastating to him, of course, and embarrassing to you. But better devastation and embarrassment than damnation. You want him on his feet and forgiven before the master on the day of judgment. Your flippant callous arrogance in these things bothers me. You pass it off as a small thing, but it's anything but that. Yeast, too, is a small thing, but it works its way through a whole bunch of bread dough pretty fast. So get rid of this yeast. Our, tri our true identity is flat and plain, not puffed up with the wrong kind of ingredient. The mass Messiah, our Passover lamb, has already been sacrificed for the Passover meal, and we are the unraised bread part of the feast. So let's live our part, live out our part in the feast, not as raised bread swollen with the yeast of evil, but as flat bread, simple, genuine, unpretentious. So there's a sense of arrogance that's happening within the church. Paul is calling it out. He's, he's saying we need to deal with what's happening here. That's not easy. It's embarrassing. 
but it is not good. <laughs> it is not good for the individual. It is not good for the church at whole. Now, as we get to the book of 2 Corinthians, we see that there is a, actually a good outcome from this, uh, that this young man uh, who has been dealt with in, in love here, he's, he's challenged, uh, recognizes uh, his, his, his sin, um, and is brought back into, into fellowship in the body of Christ. But that, that's an issue that's happening here, but Paul is also addressing the issue, against, issue, of, issue of arrogance within, within the church. That they're not dealing with their own issues, but looking at everybody else's. And I think that's where we have to be very careful today in our culture. That's what the church is often accused of, being hypocritical and judgmental. Um, and it starts with us. It starts with us. And God is going to allow us to go through some difficult things so that we see our need for him. So that we can live a life that is different, that is set apart than the culture in which we live in, so that the culture would be actually drawn to it. Unfortunately, right now, it seems like the culture is repelled from the Christian faith. We want to be a place where people are drawn to a new and a different kind of life that mimics and represents the life of Christ. Now, that, that doesn't come easy. We, we, we heard that. <laughs> Uh, it, Jesus even says, it's not going to be easy. People aren't going to want to just flock and, and be a part of it. But we have to be different. And we have to love like Christ loved. And that is with patience, not with envy. And we'll talk about this week, not with arrogance. Because Jesus doesn't love us with with arrogance he willingly sacrificed himself for for us he faced the greatest challenge of of all and he he calls us he says experience what i i have to give <laughs> experience this breakthrough life this empowered life that the father gives now it's different than the world <laughs> And it doesn't always make sense, and we don't always see it fully now, but we will one day experience it, experience it fully. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. And so we don't want to be a church that's just going through the motions. We don't want to become puffed up and arrogant and think that we've got it all figured out and we don't have our own issues to deal with because we all do individually and collectively. That we can begin to live a life that is attractive, that's like Jesus's, so that others would be drawn to it. Those people of peace that God brings into our lives. But we first have to have peace in our own lives and in our own midst, is what Paul is saying, for anybody to be attracted to it. And so we seek to live that kind of life. And it's embarrassing when we don't. <laughs> and there are times when we need to be called out when we aren't. So that we can live the life that God wants for us. Well, in our prayers uh, for today, uh, we pray that God would be with us as we go through those difficult times. Uh, as, we, as we struggle to be different and set apart. It's not always easy, but that we would be people not just going through the motions, but actually living and experiencing this life God wants for us. We know that people are dealing with the reality of adversity, and we ask that God would use that for good in, in your life and mine and in the lives of those that we care about. And so, so today we pray for those who are dealing with cancer. We pray for young, young children, for, for Max and Abel. Uh, the baby who was just born, Max, and then the young boy, Abel, who was uh, in, involved in a drowning accident. We pray for him and his family. We pray for those who are going to have babies. pray for Jackie. Uh, we, we pray today uh, for our nation uh, in the midst of a verdict that was given yesterday that we would begin to, as a nation, heal, um, be restored. Um, but again, it starts 
it starts with us. And so we, we pray for that within in our own hearts. Let me pray. Lord, we know that this journey of Christianity is not meant to be easy. We are asked to love when we are hated and to cultivate peace during times of conflict. Help us to lean on your guidance today. And so we do, Lord. We lean on your guidance and direction. Uh, we, we seek to be people who are not just going through the motions of our, our walk with you, but, but desire to be more and more like you every day. Lord, make that happen in our, our lives and in our community here in this church. Uh, Lord, uh, help us not to become arrogant or puffed up, but recognize uh, our, our own struggles and our own needs um, and um, forgiveness uh, that, that is ours in, in you. Uh, and, and help us, Lord, uh, to be and to live a life that is attractive to others, that they would see something different in us as followers of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that our eyes would be open to those people of peace that you bring into our lives so that we can share this with them. We know the adversities of life, of this life, are real, and so we pray for those families and individuals who are struggling today. For Tom and Rich and Kathy and Bob uh, is in their battles with cancer, for those who are unemployed and looking for work, those who deal with depression, uh, we pray today, Lord, for those who are uh, recovering from surgeries, uh, those who are waiting on testing, uh, those who are on life support, uh, we just ask, Lord, your, your hand of favor on us, your people, and in these times of adversity that we would be drawn ever closer uh, to you. Uh, we pray for our nation on this day, Lord, uh, as we seek reconciliation, that you would provide that for this nation and that we would, uh, would see uh, all people as you see all people, Lord, um, as, as your, your children who are loved, and who you seek to be in relationship with. Um, you've made that possible through Jesus. And so, Lord, uh, he is our Savior. He is the one we, we look to today. And, and he is the one we seek to emulate and share with the world. Um, we need justice in our world as well, Lord. And we pray for that right balance <laughs> uh, in, in, in all situations and circumstances that we face. Uh, go with us today, Lord. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good to be with you this morning. Uh, just to let you know, we will not be together tomorrow. Uh, Rachel and I are driving down to uh, Nashville to pick up Eli. Eli finished uh, his first year of college uh, yesterday, and so we're going to go uh, scoop him up and bring him home. Um, and... Uh, uh, just pray for a safe journey for us uh, tomorrow on Friday. I look forward to seeing you this weekend and that uh, God would, would bless you uh, today uh, as you go about uh, your, your day. So uh, have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.